Hey everyone and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah and today's video is the first half of my Inktober drawings. This year I decided to do Inktober a little differently. When the prompt list launched last month, I was looking at them and I noticed that pairs of prompts went really well together. So I thought this year I would combine every two prompts and post every other day. That way I could spend a little more time on the drawings if I want to and it's more challenging that way. Since all of my art includes animals, I looked at each prompt and how I could incorporate an animal that fits with it. Or is the prompt, and the first two days of Inktober, the prompts made it easy. Inktober day one's prompt was fish, and day two is wisp. And jellyfish are the wispiest fish I could think of, and they aren't even fish. Some cool things I learned about them is that jellyfish are the oldest multicellular animal on Earth. And scientists have found jellyfish parts in rocks that are believed to be over 500 billion years old. So they are definitely older than dinosaurs. Also, did you know that jellyfish can clone themselves? So if you cut a jellyfish in half, it will literally turn into two new jellies. Also, a group of jellyfish that can include up to 300,000 of them is called a swarm, bloom, or smack of jellyfish. I learned a bunch more about sea jellies from this really short and to the point article I found, and I'll link it in the description if you want to learn even more about jellyfish, and I really encourage it because a lot of it I didn't know. Day 3 and 4 Inktober prompts is bulky and radio, and for some reason I had a vision of a rhino jamming out to a boombox on his shoulder like in the 90s. When I was trying to figure out how this rhino would hold it on his shoulder, I did struggle a bit, so I decided to create a rhino-gorilla hybrid instead. Gorillas are bulky just like rhinos, and I think they work really well together to create this gorino. If you're familiar with some of my other art, I do enjoy making animal hybrids just to play around with their characteristics and how similar they can be to one another. I have a video where I created a bat tingo, where I drew connections from a bat and a flamingo to create this hybrid that is actually kind of cool, and I would really encourage you to go check out that video. I'll have it linked in the description, and I'll have maybe a little side card at the top corner for you to check out if you're interested. My entire Inktober last year was actually me taking each one of those prompts and creating an animal hybrid with them. So if you're interested to see that, I have a sketchbook tour playlist where I go through each and every one of them. I'll have that link below too. I also just adore when rhinos lift their lip up like that. I think it's just so silly looking and I'm definitely here for it. Inktober day five's prompt is blade. And yes, this prompt I decided to do all on its own, honestly, so the rest could be pairs since October does have an odd number of days. As I was looking through Instagram, I noticed everyone's day five had some kind of dagger or sword or knife, but why not just a fragile blade of grass? So I turned this prompt into a wholesome drawing of a bunny meeting a little ladybug. Day six prompt was rodent and day seven was fancy. And at first I wanted to draw a possum just decked out in jewelry, but when I actually sat down to do the actual drawing, I felt uninspired for some reason. I think it was just a little too ambitious for how I was feeling that day. It might have been one of the days where I was a little drained or something. So then I looked up the word fancy and noticed its verb form, like, do you fancy a dance? Or fancy seeing you here. So I first thought about having a scene of two snakes at a bar and a snake offering a lady snake a drink, but the drink had like a mouse in it or something. But I struggled with sketching how exactly that snake would hold a drink, but also have an arm around the lady. So instead of tiring myself out too hard and becoming discouraged, trying to figure that out. I decided to keep that rat in a drink idea and kept it simple to create a cute little mouse just enjoying his little bath in a glass. While there's an Otimus cat lurking below. I love using these brush tip ink pens and honestly I'm obsessed with them. I've used them in every drawing so far. But something that these pens are commonly used for I feel like is calligraphy. But I don't really do much calligraphy so I thought I would use this as an excuse to test out and practice a little calligraphy in this drawing. So I decided to add text in a fan fancy way like calligraphy is to me. I feel like it's not that bad for not really doing any beforehand and for it being a last minute idea to add in. And oh my gosh, looking at this drawing as I'm editing, it would be so cute if I added like a couple olives strung onto his tail or him feeding himself a little olive. Let me know if you like this illustration below because I'm heavily considering turning this into a digital piece and reworking it into a print or sticker. I think that would be so fun. So let me know if that's something you would be interested in. Day eight's prompt was teeth and day nine was throw. And for some reason my brain went 
straight to a baby shark, throwing a tantrum and ripping his teeth out and throwing it across the room or something. But when I sat down to draw it, I just wasn't feeling it. The inspiration for this was that sharks lose up to 100 teeth daily, and because they have so many teeth, it doesn't really matter, and they grow back so rapidly. So I thought it would be really funny for a little baby shark to use this as like a weapon or something as he threw a tantrum. But then I started thinking of other animals that are known for their teeth, and crocodiles are definitely known for those jaggedy sharp teeth. I saw a bunch of images of crocs jumping really high out of the water for chunks of meat and stuff, and some of them looked like they were straight up calculating a catch from a football throw or something. So I decided to play on that idea in this drawing. I also experimented in not trying to draw every scale and every little bump and line in this crocodile, but instead using dots and lines to kind of suggest its texture. And overall, I think it made it pretty interesting. So for day 10, the prompt was hope, and day 11 was disgusting. And at first, I was thinking about doing a two panel comic of maybe an animal giving a tasty looking gift to their friend, but that gift actually turning out to be really gross when the friend tried it. But I was talking to my brother about it and he's like, you should make a raccoon praying for his next meal. And I just couldn't not draw it. You know, as they say, one raccoon's hope is another man's disgusting. This pair of prompts was actually the most exciting to draw from when I saw the list to begin with. And it is day 12, Slippery, and day 13, Dune. So obviously it's a camel having a grand old time sliding down a sand dune. For day 14, the prompt was armor, and day 15 was outpost. So I definitely knew I wanted to draw an armadillo, but when I started looking up armored animals, a pangolin came up, and I fell in love with him so fast. When I saw outpost, I really didn't know what it was. And when I looked it up, I just kept thinking to myself, I really don't want to draw an army of these critters. So I decided to interpret outpost as a pangolin going out and posting a bunch of selfies. If I were a pangolin, I would have a whole camera roll of selfies of myself too. I mean, have you seen how cool they are? They straight up have armor plating on their body. So there you have it, the first half of my Inktober 2020 journey. I hope you guys enjoy these little drawings as much as I enjoyed coming up with them. I feel like combining these prompts makes it more challenging, but it honestly is keeping me engaged in it and interested and excited to draw each one. If you are curious about the supplies I use in this video, please check out my affiliate links in the description. Like I said, I am obsessed with these Prismacolor Premier Brush pens. They are just so juicy and really easy to control and vary the line weight in my drawings, which I love. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video every Friday, so hit the notification bell too so you'll know exactly when I upload. If you don't follow me on Instagram and Twitter, please do because I do post a lot more art on there along with my Inktober posts. I have all my socials in the description. If you made it this far, please let me know in the comments which of these Inktober drawings was your favorite and why. I love to hear what you guys think and honestly, it's why I keep making videos. I get so excited talking about animals and drawings and when I see you commenting, saying that you learned something or that you liked my art, it really does mean a lot and it drives me to make each video better than the last. My next milestone on YouTube is 100 subscribers and I think I'm just over 60 and I can't thank you guys enough to all of you that leave me comments and feedback on my videos. You guys are honestly the best and I do take the time to read each and every one of them and reply to you because they seriously make my day. Anyway, with all that gush out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.